Yes, it certainly does. For McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks Footy. We are at the MCG where we've got a nice old afternoon in preparation for this clash. It's Richmond versus Fremantle at the home of footy. I'm Jay Clark and I'm joined by, well, it's the best box in, uh, in radio. Let's be honest. You've got the 287 gamer, two-time All-Australian. He took the kick-ins for a very long time for the St Kilda <laughs> Football Club <laughs> and somehow, somehow got taken pick five in the Carlton draft. I'm going to ask him about that. Hello to you, Lee Montagna. Aren't you chime in with these cheap gags about the kick-ins. I played <laughs> halfback for two years and then that's all I've been a member for. But no, nice to be here. It's, a, uh, it's going to be a good game of footy. I'm looking forward to it. But everyone's in a good mood in this box too yes. today. So looking forward to the show. We've had a, we've got a special guest. We're going to get to him in a second. We've had a nice bubbly lead into. this. This, but Dirt, yeah, do you remember the man who first fueled the fire around you and your kick-ins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, Dirt, Dirt Burton wrote an article about it. He did? Yeah, he took a little, had a little shot. Uh, because he'd which, been speaking to who? <laughs> well, no, we won't go into it, but it was probably an unnecessary <laughs> article at the time, so that's where it stemmed from, but uh, we've moved on. Well, you were ahead like. of your time. It really sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me bought it. <laughs> you bought it up. And just quickly, so you're in the you're in the news throughout the week, the Carlton draft, so yes. five oh, former yeah, well champions, done. well done. But how on earth, how in hell did you get taken after Dylan Buckley? No disrespect to Dylan, but surely you, you got him covered on the football field. Oh, have you seen the shape I'm in? I'm not, I'm not really going to be <laughs> running out the game too strong. Pick five, steal. That's going to be a bargain pick for yes. uh, the Castle Main Magpies. Yes. The only thing I'm a bit flat about is that all the other boys that got picked are playing in like the West Highlands League and the West Gippsland League. I'm in the Bendigo League, which apparently is, a good league. is one of the stronger leagues in the competition. So, unfortunately for Castle Main, they've got me and I've got eight weeks to get fit, so it's going to be fun. Uh, we'll all be cheering for you, Joey. In fact, you might come out and watch have a few cans. It's uh, going to promise to be an excellent day now. This I've man... got other stuff on, Joey. <laughs> Do we get... Well, let's get to you now then, Daisy. All right, Ross Lyon called this man the best player in the competition. He did it all for Colin with Carlton, took big marks, kicked clutch goals, kicked it from the boundary as well, and do a magnificent job for Channel 7. It's Dale Thomas. Ah, thank you, Jay. What a day to be here, too. The sun's out. This autumn weather's got me up and about. Good for golf, good for fishing, good for football, except for last night. It was like a wet weather game. It was a piece of soap. It was shit. The bloody... <laughs> not a goal scored in that second term. Four Ranked. Ranked. Four yes. Ranked. 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 And then they come out in the third quarter and start shelling them from everywhere. Yes. Footy he is good, though, and I'm up and about at Sunday, and I feel dangerous. We got the Demons and the Cats in our crosshairs. In particular, Tom Hawkins is going to be a massive talking point this week out throughout the uh, throughout the week as he prepares to pass Joel Selwood's games record. He's a good man, a good friend of this man who did it for Geelong and for GWS, speaking of kicking goals from the boundary line. He threaded every angle there ever was at Ooh. Steve Johnson. Hello to you. G'day, Jay. G'day, boys. Great to be here. How good's the MCG looking? And I'm glad you introduced me. I'm, I'm glad thought, you introduced me. I thought it was Michael Parkinson with Joey Montagna for the first six minutes of this show. Well, I hey? it's, it's open mic. Uh, I, like to, yeah. uh, I like to wind him up a little bit, uh, my old mate. No, you now, like to hog the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this Get man, to the gas. This man <laughs> has stepped into our box with a little bit of trepidation. I, I sense he's played 221 games, kicked 180 goals, also a clutch set shot goal kicker and nearing a return, which is very exciting. He did it for Essendon and Melbourne. It's Jakey Melksham. Thank you, Jay. Pleasure to be here. As Daisy said, beautiful weather. And I've woken up this morning. The D's have knocked off the, the top of the table. Ooh. Have so you had a couple of Valiums? Or... <laughs> <laughs> what energy? I'm just, just trying to – I've got that nervous energy. I'm trying to relax into it. Uh, I reckon I've got a gut feel while we're all in a good mood. I reckon there's no hangovers in this box today. It feels like everyone's coming uh, fresh. Uh, Jay. Oh, you'll be, you'll be dusting. Jay was in the long room. room, room, room oh, 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 <laughs> dinner in the committee room. Basket press. Oh, oh. 2016 Rockford Shiraz hey, look nice. very, they're yeah. very nice. Five Last years Question to our guest. That's oh, a question. Oh, did you watch the footy last night? Were you in the cup? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, Jay. <laughs> he still plays the Melbourne. No, he was off doing something else. Oh, what do you reckon he was doing days. last night? Just nah. a nice, easy one to get him out of <laughs> <laughs> Just a full toss outside off. <laughs> It's a little cover drive to get you off the mark, Jake. Of course. I was here. I was uh, I was on the bench. I've got a game day role just down there. And, um, what do you do play. down there? Well, not a whole heap, but it's more <laughs> just um, giving some advice from a player's perspective as opposed to coaches all the time. Oh, yeah. Support staff. So, so just give us so an example. Much. What's a little nugget you gave? Uh, so Big Petty and uh, Jacob Van Royen have been working on the aerial game. They come off. I show them some stuff on the laptop, talk them through some incidents uh, or some some stuff that they've done out there on the ground and, and just pump them up and get them going. In game? You show time. vision from in game? Yep. 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 So, um, and you just talk to them through certain areas of the game, um, mainly the forwards, but everyone um, is in it together. And, yeah, it's he's, good. 
He got Petty going. He took about four or five contested marks. He was claiming that, wasn't he? Yeah, I threw him in first, didn't I? (laughs) (laughs) Just Um, just wait till the big questions come because Jay's got on his agenda to talk about the Melbourne forward line and whether we can trust him in the final. So we've got the man here. Well, you have been asking a lot of questions too, Jay. And on Thursday night, you posed this one to Kenny. and, And I'm with you on this. We'll start with the question and his response. Is he playing tonight? Well, Jay was picked the team, and was he named? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jay. He, Ask it stupid questions. He, he was named, wasn't he? He was in the team. He, he, you well, named Jay, the... are you doing your media background work, or are you just pretending? <laughs> uh, well, Matty, Matty Nix is, is not This is the journalism listening. we get out of him. Uh, we, uh, okay, so he's out. Okay, he's no, out. No, he's playing, Jay. Oh, he's definitely <laughs> confusing me, Ken. <laughs> So oh. that no, so there's Kenny being a bit of a smart ass with you, but yes. then Kenny had to do this later in the game. Yeah, I made a mistake playing Connor Rosie tonight. That was clear. It was obvious. That all the testing that we done, all the medical support we could get, all the information I could get was Connor was able to, and he and I seen it with my own eyes. He was actually able to run as fast as he needed to, kick as long as he needed to. But once fatigue set in tonight, that was clear. And you know, you can be, I can try and hide behind that, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not coward when it comes to owning a mistake and that was what it was so there you go so you put the question to him and you already knew the answer that he should have gone with but he refused to go with it so every others having a little laugh at you there but yeah. i think that was just a good chance to pump you up for making a point that kenneth should have not played their staff so he sent up. you a personal apology has he since and said sorry jay uh, i was <laughs> wrong you were right I haven't got that text message, <laughs> uh, yet from ken but he's kidding himself like who, who has a six-day uh, hamstring we might go into it um who, when kenny the, po- in the or podcast connor rosie Kenny's kidding himself or Connor Rosie? Well, Kenny took we'll responsibility. Have that, we'll have that chat. They're, they're all kidding go. themselves. But while we're on the positivity bandwagon. Can, can, you, can I just sit? No, you, you tell shut the, up. So the, while the, we're on the positivity bandwagon, <laughs> uh, our man Joey, it, we, we watch him throughout the week and we marvel at the notes that he brings mm-hmm. in. He's got four or five blokes on the payroll somewhere oh. giving him all the good stuff. I but wish. every now and then he I starts wish. to crunch his own numbers and you see his head going, something spits out. Well, last night it was this. And then we've got the MCG. This is a big one. Melbourne and Geelong. This is a beauty. I'm sticking fat with Melbourne for one more week. I think the midfield can get a hold of the Cats midfield with no Paddy Dangerfield. Maxi Gorn's going to dominate in the ruck, and I think the mids can own possession play in their forward half. And I think Melbourne will win a low-scoring game, 79 to 65. You get the feeling they are about the only defence that can consistently trouble what Geelong do for to the ball. Yep, I think so. They hold there. They hold. They don't get sucked up high. So those small forwards for Geelong won't be able to get out the back. May and Lever will have it all organised. I think they'll uh, they'll control the game in their forward half. The Demons. And I just got a gut feel they win a win an arm wrestle. Joey Montagna <laughs> is the Oracle. Oh, Don't I, worry I, I, about I, I, gut feel. Well, you watched that game before a play. <laughs> Final score, 74-66. You said 79-65. Yes, I did me cash on your prediction, but that's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you, Daisy. Well done. Uh, every now and then. Uh, the blind squirrel right. finds a nut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it wasn't arm wrestle, though. Jakey, you were there. At, uh, no, we're going to get to that later. Okay. We're going to get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, now, Jakey, why are you here? Is it because you're a big fan of the show and just admire our work and... All things you've mentioned so yeah. far. Um, yeah. But obviously just uh, rehabbing a knee at the moment, trying to fill in a bit of time. Yep. I've got three kids at home. <laughs> <on the show. laughs> um, I just spent an hour at Chadston with my wife. So I, um, I thought I'd come house. in and watch footy. But was the hour a, a good hour or an expensive hour? Because there's different types of hours you can have at Chadston. Oh. It's, if it's expensive, it's good because your wife's, your wife's had a good okay. time. Yeah. So. Okay, happy. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, very, very good. <laughs> Mother's Day's next week, Milkshake. Oh, good um, yeah, it is too. Hey, <laughs> when, when are you returning? You can't be far away. About five or six weeks away, I think. So um, you, you can't sort of say that it's exact timing. Uh, I've got to tick off about a month of training unrestricted as my last marker. So mm-hmm. once I've done that, uh, I'll be... Very confident that just, I can return. Just in time for finals. Yes, yeah, nice. I like that. And uh, we're going to talk about Melbourne's forward efficiency uh, in a little second. So we love having you in the box, box Jake. Just a couple of uh, rules. Try not to swear um, too much. Let me just give you a little bit of an example of what not to do uh, when we spoke to you earlier in the year. You got married. Congrats, mate. You're Thank looking you. sensational. <laughs> I saw you at school pick up the other day too. <laughs> nearly, nearly blind myself. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot where I was. <laughs> I thought I was in the locker room. Melky, the only man who can get away with that is Brian Taylor. And you are not quite uh, there yet. So just uh, mind your language uh, a little bit. No worries. Uh, uh, Dave we... Brown coming? 
Nath Brown? Not no, right. hopefully not. We got Melky. We can push on. <laughs> well, it's a good question because has he had another fresh round of Botox? Have we seen Nathan Brown's forehead lately? I reckon he has. I reckon, uh, he, wait, I reckon he waited for the boxing, got that out of the way. And yeah, l- last time I batch. seen him, he needed a top up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He, he was vividly showing wrinkles. Yeah, in his he head. was. He had expression. Yeah. It was weird. When he gets a fresh round, it looks like a marble bench top. His forehead, <laughs> like he can dead see your reflection, uh, his forehead. That's so as shiny as Melchie's watch he's got him. Have a look at the watch on him. Yeah, Where did you last go to Bath? That's a Bali <laughs> <laughs> There's a Rolex there on the wrist. Uh, it's a beautiful day at the MCG. What a cracking day it is. For Richmond up against the Fremantle Dockers. What are you looking at? <laughs> Jay's flat. Oh, Jay's flat. You've you? just come in. The captain's speaking. <laughs> How flat is he? Yeah. He well, it is like 10 minutes to shine. Yeah. And he did shine too. He was, I, thought, I heard it was the best segment going around. Uh, sorry I'm late. I've just been signing autographs all the way the front <laughs> from the station. And there was Bulldogs ones there. There was Richmond ones there. And then this bloke put under my, under my nose two Nathan Bauer playing cards. And I'm like... <laughs> Close. Yeah, that's a bit uh, disappointing. I might just duck my head and keep walking now. Uh, but uh, you had the some... old train ride to come up with that one. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah strong, strong. <laughs> nice. That was my best. Who's playing today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my best start. I got you in mediocre today. Too. Oh, good. I looked Jay, which to was that. really good. So How was the show? It. Oh, it was a great show. It was yeah, a bit good. of tension between Kane and TJ today Ooh. as well. So right. this is Kane thought that TJ couldn't handle any sort of criticism, but Kane was okay to get criticised. So we uh, we had a bit of a uh, how do you do? But it was it was really good. But that's only small news compared to all the news you've got. That's right. Uh, let's hit it off. This is Jay Z's uh-huh, uh-huh. Big Three. I like little Stinger Brownie. Hey, a nice old win by Melbourne, as correctly predicted by the great man Lee Montagna here. Eight point win to the Demons, 74 66. Now, we know that uh, Melbourne Football Club has arguably the best back line in the competition. They did the job on Tom Hawkins and Jeremy Cameron last night. I think those two went goalless. So it was a fantastic effort by Jake Lever and Stephen May, who very well could be the All-Australian halfback and fullback for, uh, at, the, at the end of the season. But I just still wonder, and I'm going to speak to Jake Melksham about this in a second, Joey, do you trust, and I know your mate McWalters there doing a fantastic job, but do you trust what happens in the forward half of the ground at Melbourne yet? Because Simon Goodwin keeps talking about the efficiency and the improvement. When it gets to the pointy end of the season... Are they going to be able to put a score on the board? Do you trust the Demons? The first point around that is putting a score on the board. You've got to remember, Melbourne don't need to kick 100 points because they are the best defence in the competition. They don't need to be the best offence in the competition. They just have to be more than adequate. And I think we're going to see that. I think, like, last year, if Harrison Petty or Jake Melksham played in one of the finals, they win one of those two finals at least. I think there's no issues and, and they'll be fine. They're working on this new ball movement where they're spreading the field a bit more. They are being more efficient going inside 50, which I think they addressed and realised that they need to be more efficient. And they've still got another 15 or so weeks to continue to, to improve that. So I think by finals time, I don't see their forward line being an issue. The coaching last night was an absolute masterclass. Just, was the, just the way they went, went with the whole plan. McDonald did a great job, but also you could see how patient they were once they got it between 70 and 50 metres out. Instead of just blazing away, they go lateral, or lateral again, and sort of wait for Geelong because Geelong didn't come out. They didn't shift out. They just shift across. Mm. And in doing so, they either found a hole or just got it to a nice dangerous spot. And even if it was turned over, they were set up so well behind the footy. Look, I have a little bit more concerns than Joey about the forward line. and You're it's, unconvinced? I just would love a big, powerful target that so often just draws the attention. And you Bailey Fritch does a nice job. but Melksham? Well, and again, I, I was always singing the praises of Melky when he played because he was that player. When you get the ball and you look up, he was somebody coming at the leg directly, whether it be 30 metres, 40 metres, 20 metres. There's always an option there, whereas when there isn't that type of player, there's a lot of back leads, side leads, and defences these days are so good at coming across. Is it not Harrison Petty? He's as good a contested mark as anyone. Jake, bring you in on this. Like, I'm looking Down at the, the line he is, but... He, he's only, he's not gonna, he doesn't have to stuff the stat sheet and kick four or five yeah. goals, but by having the big, the big banana you can kick to that can take it, contested mark will be a reference point. He's going to be a huge avenue to goal for Melbourne this year, isn't he? He is. He, um, like last night was, I think he t- took 10 to 12 marks. Um, I know he took a lot of them up the ground, but that's fine. He doesn't need to kick a bag every week. He, he has done that in the past. Last year he kicked six out here against Richmond on a Sunday Arvo. Um, but 
Last night was the resurgence of Harrison Petty, and I think moving forward, you'll start to see him take more marks in the forward line. He, he's taken a few and and, uh, and kicked some points at the same time, but if he kicks his one or two a week and has 10 marks, he'd be pretty happy. You don't expect him to do what he did last night every week. That was a really good game last week, but the difference between his really good and really poor games is too far apart. If he can have a six or seven every week, then that's what you expect. I mean, I thought his game was a nine out of ten last night. He was brilliant. But nine he's out had of a, ten. He's had a few games previously before that that have been a one or a two. You tell me any other player that's taken a lot of marks down the ground like that to set yourself up. That was a brilliant game by Petty last night. But there's a big difference when he's best and he's worst. He was outstanding uh, with his role that he played. But he's no superstar. You know, he's not a goal kicker. If you look at Melbourne's front half. I, I look at the team before the start of the game and I reckon there's only three players I think can kick multiple goals. Frida. And that's Fritch, Pickett and Van Ruin. Van Ruin. Um, and apart from that, you look and you think, well, they've got some pretty good handy role players. Some so you good don't trust pressure either. players, Chandler and Neil Bullen, who get up the ground and play really important roles for them. So you're unconvinced. Well, I think they need to they need to find another three or four goals. And I'd like to see Petraki go forward and, and hit the scoreboard a little bit more often, whether it's, you know, 60% uh, percent midfield time, 40% percent forward. But I think they need midfielders kicking goals for them to be, a, you know, a premiership contender. When you look at the Blues and their two big bananas, and it's a different type of forward line, but there's four or five goals almost guaranteed when you rock up every week. When you look at Melbourne, you're going, geez, you hope that they can scrounge two from here and one from here. So it is unconventional, and at times it has let them down. So that's why there's that little bit of trepidation. Max gone enormous uh, in the ruck. It's interesting um, situation, selection conundrum the Cats have with Conway and Stanley in the ruck. But can you tell us, Melky, what is the difference? So you got bundled out in straight sets last year. Super high opportunity, you know, inaccurate, inefficient. What is the difference? When you sat down with Goody at the start of summer, like we have to map out something a little bit different here. Can you tell Melbourne fans what you're trying to do that's a little bit different this year? Well, you mentioned a part of it there, the inefficiency in the forward line. And that there was two parts to it. There was kicking it in the ball, uh, into the forward line to our forwards and trying to connect, and yeah. then also the conversion. So, yeah. um, you know, at the start of last year, we were right up there on the, in terms of the 18 teams of conversion, but it dropped away. Uh, last night, again, we kicked a lot of points last night. So well, we kicked 10 goals, 14, and they kicked 9 goals, 12. It wasn't a great kicking game from either team, but if we had converted another four or five that were easy shots, mm. you're probably sitting here seeing us win by five or six goals, and you might not be talking about how we're going to find more goals. So mm-hmm. you can look at it twofold. Um, but what I mentioned at the start, it's that efficiency going inside 50 and, and converting. Hit your targets, not rocket science. And part of my um, worry with Melbourne watching them over the last 12 months has not necessarily been the entries going inside 50 because I think if you generate enough inside 50s, you should be able to create enough chaos ahead of the ball to be able to scrounge a goal from ground level or, or a contested mark or someone lays a block and you get a little bit of separation on your opponent. Where it, the worry was for me was was the lack of movement in the front half, in the forward 50 for the Ds. So, um, the predictability. <clears throat> well, just the chaos, maybe the, the unpredictability yeah. more, more so, um, Joey. Just the, the ability to, to, to not allow the opposition to get set behind the ball, just to allow a little bit of chaos when the ball's going inside 50. That, that's probably an extra three or four goals a game which, which they can crea- create or score off the back of the turnover because the opposition's um, picking the, up the ball under a certain amount of pressure. Was there a slightly different plan last night centre forward? Was it was it to try and be more patient? Um, that's something that we've been working on, and I think you would have seen that really come to fruition last night. But what we are trying to do against a side like Geelong, who they're similar to us, they have great stability behind the ball, and if you play straight line, you're yep. just not going to beat them. So it's the same if you play Melbourne. If you kick the ball to... Maisie and Lever, you, you won't score. So you've got to go around. You've got to try and create other avenues. And um, we executed that nice quite win. well. Nice win for the Demons last night. And as you say, nice coaching performance mm. from Simon Good. All right, Simon Hawkins played his 354th game uh, this weekend. He will equal his great mate, Joel Selwood, at 355. But he comes in, Stevie, out of form. Hasn't kicked a sausage, I think. Uh, don't shake your head like we're not going to come to you on it. We're going to you on it, mate. Hasn't kicked a sausage <laughs> over, uh, over the past month. How's the panic that's in? Didn't he just he got past I, I was reading in front of him. <laughs> come to Raps me, just hand me a piece of paper, and I'm thinking, I'll, I'll, what am I doing here? Some, I'll buy him some time. Time. Tom All right, Hawkins. I know what you're talking is about. He, is he out of form? Is he, or is he, he, he is. He is out of form. Is it um, on the back, though, of being too selfless? So he played uh, a role against Jacob Wiedering where he almost played a decoy, and now you try and – not flirting with your form, but being so unselfish, he's almost played himself out of it. 
Well, he is probably the most selfless player in the competition. So to a degree, maybe you've got a point there. But I still think, you know, good players, and he's been a very good player for a long period of time, he'll find a way to hit the scoreboard as well. Absolutely. And he goes four games yeah. on a trot, on the trot without kicking a goal. That suggests he's out of form. The reasons behind that, partly due to his off-season, had a really, really poor off-season. So he's not at full fitness. Why? Oh, what, he, how, what happened there? Yeah, he had a foot injury, uh, maybe a bit of a hot spot in, in the foot. So he missed big chunks of the preseason. So as you get older, I mean, last year, I think he missed a fair bit of the off-season, but he came out and had a sensational season. Another year older, maybe it just takes you a little bit longer to get going. We've got to judge Tom Hawkins on the second half of the season and the big games towards the back end of the year because he's still going to be um, a pretty important player for them. You, you need to, he drags a very good defender. Absolutely. You don't need him to be Tom Hawkins of 2011 when he absolutely dominated a grand final, but Geelong's doing enough to, you'd have to think that they're going to finish in the top four and then they need those two players firing at the right time. He'll kick five this week against Port. Well, he plays Port Adelaide. So he comes up against the Sava Radagalea and Ken Hinckley, which will be an interesting one-on-one matchup in itself Friday night uh, down there at the Cattery. Can we have a listen to uh, Chris Scott, who spoke about Tom Hawkins last night and very uh, in his corner? Well, he'll come out at some point, but um, at the risk of sounding defensive, I'm not sure how many goals Hawks kicked in his career because I don't really, I just don't really follow those numbers. Um, but what I'm certain of is that he's given away a whole lot more than any other key forward in the history of the game. So look, to measure his um, influence on our team by goals alone, I think it's a sexy stat. Um, now, he's already come out of a game in that month as well. So again, that sort of number's a bit inflated. Um, and the last couple of weeks as well, we've played well enough without Hawk dominating on the scoreboard. And again, you sort of... What will we have in a perfect world? I, th- I think in a perfect world, we'd have four, five, six guys down there that are real threats. You know, we've um, probably over the years, over the decade or two, maybe been a little bit too conscious of Hawke and he might be a victim of what he's done in the past. Yeah, I don't think you've got anything to worry about with Tom Hawkins. Nope. He'll find his form and he'll be a big part of the Cats push. So they are 7-1, and one, which is a great luxury. I still wish we had Hitcher Caravan because I went last week with Zach Guthrie, potential All-Australian, mm. and again last night I thought he was their best player <laughs> in a losing side. Mm. You watch this man. He's going to grow and grow and grow, and he's going to be What about that article that was written in the Herald Sun before you went with it? Under the same heading, is Zach Guthrie going to be in a sneaky Australian? Oh, that, that was after I went. Or was it? Yeah. I sent I it to you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they went with an after. Okay. 